There are a lot of CAD programs out there and because of all the convolutions and all the craziness, it's really not easy to figure out which one works for you. Especially if you're at home trying to just make something. There are a lot of free versions, but the real question is, are they worth messing with? And if those are not worth messing with, should you dive into a subscription service for a more professional CAD suite that could get you what you really need? Can you do that without taking a huge chunk out of your budget? If you're just wanting to make custom things for your 3D printer, this is the type of issue that will deter people and cause them to go to Thingiverse and download stuff, get bored, and then leave their 3D printer in the corner to die. It all seems really intimidating, and I'm gonna go through my thoughts on what type of people should use what CAD software and what works best for you. All the makers on the internet seem to at least like one of the following CAD programs. SketchUp, FreeCAD, Tinkercad, and yes, even Fusion 360. But I've got news for you, free isn't actually free. Some of these don't actually cost you any money, but they cost you in other ways, either by denying you certain features that will allow you to do anything of actual value, like exporting STL or STP files, saving more than five files at one time, or just simply being too difficult and causing me to want to throw things at the wall. I hate it here. I'm looking at you, FreeCAD. FreeCAD is really the closest version of professional software that you can get without opening your wallet. But switching between different modules and figuring out how to go from parts to assemblies to sketches will waste your time when all you really wanted to do was make something. I've gotten exceedingly frustrated with FreeCAD, but this is in comparison with professional software that I've used from Inventor to SolidWorks to PTC Creo, pretty much all of them that you can think of. PTC Creo is actually one of the more frustrating professional CAD softwares and FreeCAD is actually worse than that to me. There is a reason it's free. It's getting better than it used to be and it might rival professional software someday, but for now, I'd give it a hard pass. I know I'm going to ruffle some feathers on this one, but I am not a fan of SketchUp either. Sorry to say. I think I can admittedly say I'm spoiled, but I've found SketchUp limiting as to what organic sketches you can draw, lack of ability for specifying size for fabrication, and now, in order to do anything at all like exporting files or anything else, you have to pay. So if you're going to pay, you have other choices. In that vein, I'm also talking about good old Fusion 360. Everybody likes to point to Fusion 360 for free on the internet, and it's free, it's free, it's free. It is free, but it has some caveats to it, and so do others, and I'll get to that later. It is not the beacon of freedom that you think it is. You can get the free limited version, and you can only save 10 files, greatly restricted export ability, and to get anything useful out of Fusion 360 now, you gotta pay $680 a year. That doesn't mean it's a bad program. It's just not the beacon of freedom that everybody says it is. And it may not come out on top for usability and accessibility for all the makers out there. So let's learn the lesson that free isn't free. There are some complications to this, but at least it leads me to the top three professional CAD softwares that I have to recommend, all for different reasons and for different types of people in different points in their maker journey. And to truly access your creative potential, I'd recommend at least one of these three for different reasons. Now we move on to the best free option, Onshape. Now I know that free is not free, but there's a caveat here as well. This is actually the best free software that you can get right now, hands down, for a parametric modeler. It is free, completely free, but all of your models will go into the cloud and be publicly accessible to everyone. I've seen Onshape for some time, and I was actually really impressed with its ability to make parts, create assemblies, and create prints very easily compared to the most professional software that you can get. It really has anything you could want. The app is better than what anybody else offers. In fact, nobody else really has one. It might be kind of a gimmick, but at least you can view your parts on the go. It is actually fairly well done, but it is difficult to use on an iPhone or any phone. But I bet an iPad or a smart pad would do pretty well. In the very least, it gives you access to your files in multiple places. I've done some printing through my Octopi setup and being able to download the STL and STP files to send through Octo Everywhere would actually be quite useful. The main drawback for Onshape is the publicly accessible files. If you're a casual creator, then no big deal. If you are ever wanting to develop a product or something private, then it's a hard stop unless you want to spend $1,500 a year for a commercial version of Onshape. This version does get you unlimited free storage, but that price is pretty steep for maybe developing a product that might sell. So Onshape has a great entry-level game, but it's really hard to fork out the subscription money for something a little more serious. And now we move on to the most overhyped, yet still useful, 
Fusion 360. <laughs> yeah. To me, this is another example of why free isn't free. Fusion 360 is indeed free, yet it does have some caveats as well. Yet they chose a different way than Onshape to kind of keep you from using full capabilities of the CAD software and entice you to buy the full price version. Although it isn't a bad program overall, Fusion 360 out of the three I'm mentioning today actually comes out on the bottom. It was actually kind of complicated to come up with a, an opinion for Fusion 360 because I've never been swayed one way or the other. I've kind of just been rather indifferent to it, except for the overhype on the internet. And I was kind of underwhelmed with when I tried it personally myself, yet everybody else seems to love. It makes me question my reality a little bit. Come to find out it's actually had a big market push over the last several years, so that's why you're seeing it everywhere. It surfaced on a lot of YouTube videos as the go-to source for makers, but I disagree. It isn't a bad program per se, especially if you've never gotten into any other CAD before. However, my main gripe with Fusion 360 is the interface. Now the buttons and ribbons and everything else are fine, but the terms and the way they sort things is just a little harder to deal with. It uses non-industry standard terms for some of the joints and constraints, seemingly for the sole reason of being different and groundbreaking. You might ask, why should I worry about industry standards? And that's a good question. And you might not really need to, but I've found that standards work pretty well because they've been standardized. And they're there for a reason, and they've figured out an easier way to do workflow. I have not found Fusion 360 to be straightforward at all, honestly. I've given it several chances since 2015, and I've come to the same conclusion every time I've opened the program. It has a lot of great features like general parametric model parts, surfaces, sheet metal, and what seems to be a fully featured CAM software. All these goodies make Fusion 360 actually quite enticing, which is probably why it's popular. But it still harkens back to what I said about using FreeCAD. Anything that prevents me from my goal of designing and making something easily is a waste of time in my eyes. There are two reasons why you see a lot of tutorials and classes for Fusion 360. It has a heavy marketing push from Autodesk to establish it as the main one in the field. And you need help to learn how to use it, because it's a little difficult. So you need all these classes or a ton of time to figure it out. I much prefer a program that you can just dive into and not be hindered in the creative process. Fusion 360 does technically have a free version, but you can only have 10 active and editable files at a time. You can have an unlimited amount of read-only files, and you can convert from read-only to active at any point, but you have to trade it out in order to edit the other parts. So the way they do this is so you can't have a huge assembly of different parts and design a really big product and commercially sell it. It's their way of kind of restricting your user access for it. It's a weird way to do it, but that's how they decided to keep it simple. I'll have to verify this, but I have seen that you can make up to $1,000 with this free software per year before having to upgrade to the commercial version, which costs $680 a year. At the time of recording this, I did see that they're offering a 30% off, but it's still some odd $400 a year to get the same software. And then after that, it's gonna go up anyway. If you're wanting to 3D print with this, you can export STL, you can export step files, OBJs, all that stuff, and that's not limited. We're restricted on exporting DWGs and DXFs, which is actually something you can use to do more industrial fabrication. It's a 2D file that you can send to have laser cut out or have plasma cut or something like that, and you can make more industrial applications with it. So it's kind of restricting you there. A lot of people won't really know how to do that or want to do that, so it, you know, it's a fine line, but if you're looking to actually make something real, that it's a way to restrict you. If you're looking for a commercial software to actually design products on, Fusion 360 may be your guy. At around $700 a year, you can have a full-blown CAD software, you can have a full-blown CAM software. So if you're looking to produce something in your garage by yourself, this thing can do it. It really can. Once you're over the learning curve, you can probably do well with it. Any CAD, no matter how difficult, can be learned to use well if you're determined to do so. All this said, I love Autodesk products. I've actually used Fusion 360's Big Brother Inventor, and I love Inventor. Inventor's great. It uses the common standards and practices that all these other CAD softwares use as well. No one can afford it for personal use, but it's still an excellent software. You can obtain it with an educational email and get it for free, though, just to try it out. Just a small hint there. Autodesk allows people to download their software for free if you're attending a university or educational institution. I think even in high school you can do that. Now we move on to the best overall option, at least in my opinion, SolidWorks Maker. Having used all of these CAD programs, I can hands down say that SolidWorks Maker is the best all around option for the casual hobbyist looking to dabble and even gives you an option to try to develop products should you want to. It costs $50 a year 
and has several options within that fee. One of the options is a full cloud option, which means you can access this in any browser, even on a Mac, so Macs could actually do CAD for a change. And that can actually switch fairly seamlessly between parametric modeling and the surface slash nodal modeling to give you more organic or ergonomic shapes. You have unlimited export files that can go to your slicer or cam of choice. If you choose the hybrid version, which I have myself, you can get the cloud-based programs, but you can also get a fully downloadable professional version of SolidWorks on your computer where you can save files locally and you have multiple options. It even has CAM built into it. This professional version is exactly like what I have for my job at work as an engineer. So you have all these things at your fingertips for $50 a year. So for $50 a year, you can get two cloud-based programs that you can access anywhere and have unlimited saves on the cloud, and you get a fully functional program on your computer that is professional level. You are also allowed to make up to $2,000 a year if you are selling products designed with this software. So legally, you're covered if you want to develop a product. So once you get further along, they have actual entrepreneurship programs where they gradate your fees into a fully fledged fully priced version so you can actually build your business if you wanted to with this, if that's something you're into. If you have no professional business aspirations, you still have a really great software to tinker with and to make whatever you want. These are some really great options here. It has a fairly easy interface on the cloud-based programs, but it is a little quirky at times. I find the interface for account management and other stuff to be a little convoluted and complicated, but you can generally figure it out. But using the actual programs is actually quite doable. Sometimes I've had it glitch and freeze and reload occasionally, and so stability has not been a really major issue, but sometimes it does happen. And this is only on the cloud-based options. I have to say that I'm not affiliated with any of these CAD programs here, and I encourage you to go try all of them out if you want to. There are fully free versions that you can kind of dip your toe in and to really get an experience. If you like the user interface, you can decide whether you want to pay $700 a year, or if $1,500 a year, or if you think it's not worth it. My suggestion is to go try them out, especially PTC Onshape, because it's free and it's actually quite good. If you really want to get into it, you could spend 50 bucks for SOLIDWORKS for an entire year and you get all these capabilities that I mentioned before. I've even seen specials where it's just $25. They really are trying to get customers for this and it's a good software setup. It's actually really quite good. SOLIDWORKS really wins bang for the buck for me. Not free, but still quite cheap. Can't beat that really. I have to give an honorable mention to Blender because it's actually a really great program. It is greatly superior to anything else for rendering organic shapes. I have not been able to do things in the Surface Modeler for SOLIDWORKS, but I've been able to do it in Blender because it's just phenomenal. It's one of the truly free softwares that's actually good. It does have plugins for CAD built into it, but it's a really awkward interface and it's really hard to define dimensions and everything. So if your ultimate goal is to fabricate something, or to make something for a specific size. Blender may not be your guy, but if you want to do organic shapes, man, it's super good. I actually personally use a combination of SOLIDWORKS Maker and all the programs involved with that and Blender to do all my creative stuff. Well, that's it. There's no better judge than yourself, so go give them a try. You can even try Fusion 360 if you want to just learn how it works, but it is not the hero you think it is for free. So get out there, give them a try, don't be afraid, don't get confused with all the convoluted mess that these things tend to do because every website is complicated. All these CAD software developers make everything more complicated than they need to. And you can access a guide I have down below that summarizes all the different benefits for each one. Hopefully that'll help you out in deciding what you really want to do. So as always, I'm signing off and I'm encouraging you to be a better maker. And what does that mean? That means continuously learning, Trying to improve yourself, whether you're a novice or an expert, is continuously trying to get better and trying to learn. I think being a maker is one of the most splendid things you can do. It's the most rewarding things you can do. It teaches you about the world and empowers you to do almost anything. So I'm encouraging people, no matter what level you're at, to try and learn and try to be better. Be a better maker. No. No, man. Shit, no, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. Excuse me, sir. Loser. What are you looking at?